I will. All right. So Lisa Konecki is our speaker today. She is an experienced and energetic diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is also called DEI, professional speaker and facilitator. Lisa specializes in counteracting unconscious bias and LGBTQ plus inclusion in business. Her impact is amplified through strengthening each person's allyship. After 12 years of being a middle school counselor, she is now an adjunct instructor at Lakeland University, training the next generation of school counselors. She has also given a TEDx talk and is a best-selling author of the book, Be an Inclusion Ally, ABCs of LGBTQ+. So with that, Lisa, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Tar. This is so fun. I have I've never been in a rotary group but holy smoke aronies I'm like I want to join this and, yes. and not that I do it well, no. join us <laughs> before that so there's there's the money thing but that's okay um and before I go any further um greetings to Jackie C and Jackie I don't know if you remember me back from the Girl Scouts of course there it is and so are you girls girls on the run I think or you did well, I was on the board, so board of directors. So yeah, there you go. And so it's oh, fun good. seeing, fun seeing familiar faces. Good to see you. And then with that, I did. I wasn't creeping on all of you, but I did a little research ahead of time. And um, and I don't know. I don't recall whose property it was, but it was somewhere in Mount Horb where you all went on a snowy day. And that looked very fun doing snowshoeing, et cetera. And like I said, I was like, what a fun group of people. And the one thing that I can recall is that um, in a moment you'll hear where I grew up, but um, you know, having snow in the beer or having beer in the snow as your cooler, that's perfect. And you know, that's what you did in high school. I grew up in the eighties. And then um, in the summer, then we would go by a creek creek and so there are those we those were our coolers so we didn't have to pay for beer or haul coolers anywhere so it was like oh this is going to be very fun and then going along okay my talk is about three strategies to improve diversity equity and inclusion another compliment never have I ever that's another game that you could play another time but you know drinking or not drinking whatever you want to do have I run into a group where I've done the research on that I'm going to speak to? So I've spoken in almost 30 states now. And I was like, huh, they already do this. Well, then they have this. Yep. Well, there's an example of this. So I'm just going to laud and, you know, applaud all of you for what you're doing so well with this. So hopefully we'll, we'll learn a little bit something along the ways, but this is going to be fun. And in my, so a little background. So I was a summer camp director, YMC and Girl Scouts for 20 years, middle and a high school counselor for 12. If you remember middle school or maybe you know someone who's still in middle school, wow, good times. So really nothing phases me. So if you wanna ask questions during the presentation, that is just peachy keen. And now I'm a professor. So now I, I train the next generation of school counselors and I'm also talking about how they can be better people. So I'll talk about what you Rotarians are doing especially well in South Madison. And, and maybe all of them are, but I mean, if I had to like put a club up there, you'd be right at the top with that. So I have what's called my um, Inclusion Institute Certified Diversity Practitioner. So I have a fancy, fancy letters behind my name that I've done a lot of research on um, how to be inclusive to lots of different populations, abilities, organizations, etc. And when I'm doing this, one of the things that intrigues me the most is learning about our indigenous population. And so at the beginning of my presentations, I like to do a land recognition. So I'm currently living in the Middleton area and uh, this is for Madison. So I know that some people are around, you know, the South Madison area. So I'm just gonna read what the land acknowledgement is. And this is what it says. We recognize this land is the ancestral home of the Ho-Chunk Nation. Who have called this land a joke since time immemorial. In the first treaty following the Indian Removal Act in 1830, the state government forcibly removed the Ho-Chunk from their home in 1832. 
In the decades that followed, the federal and state governments sought to completely remove the Ho-Chunk from Wisconsin. Despite these attempts, many Ho-Chunk people continue to return to their home in present day Wisconsin. We acknowledge the circumstances that led to the forced removal of the Ho-Chunk people and honor their history of resistance and resilience. The Ho-Chunk Nation and the other 11 First Nations residing in the boundaries of present day Wisconsin remain vibrant and strong. We recognize and respect the inherent sovereignty of the 12 First Nations that reside in the boundaries of the state of Wisconsin. And this history of colonization informs our work and vision for a collaborative future. We encourage you to visit their websites for more information. So I actually got that off of UW-Madison talking about things. Um, and so where it says I would include the entire state, um, I'm just talking about Madison right now, but just know that there are 12 indigenous nations. Um, and so that is a picture of Wilfred Cleveland, who was the president of the Ho-Chunk Nation when um, there was a dedication on campus. And so it was fun listening to all of uh, you in the beginning of where you've come from and, um, you know, different celebrations at UW football games and such. And so I just wanted to put that out there um, as a reminder of that as well. So you probably woke up this morning and you were thinking, I sure hope that there is a picture of a beaver and a lady from 1987, well done, Tara, you know, with fashion. So you're welcome, my friends. That's <laughs> me on the right, okay? Just so just so that you know. Uh, the, the picture on the left is a beaver. So for those of you who are into rodents, there you go. It's a wonderful beaver. Now, what's fun about this picture is if as you look closely at its left toe, you'll see a small Cheerio there. My guess is that they were trying to get the... Um, the beaver to smile. Ellen, do you see that? I see you leaning in. Did you see that? Ellen? Okay, good. Just, yeah, fantastic. So there's a little cheerio there trying to get the beaver to smile. Now, what's important about this is that I grew up in Reedsburg, Wisconsin. Now we're north of Madison. Some of you have probably heard about it. And I was our school mascot. Sure was. Fantastic. Now I told you we did the beer in the snow and in the creek and there wasn't a whole lot more to do in Reedsburg. We had one stoplight, you get the idea. In addition to being the school mascot, I also was our homecoming queen. That's the picture on the right. So that's Lisa Kennecke circa 1987. Uh, we talked about this in our breakout room. There's my Farrah Fawcett hair, lots of Aquanet for those of you, right? Okay, thank you, Erin. You remember what Aquanet was. I don't even know if you used it because you seem pretty young. Okay, but you've heard of it, yeah. Okay, so that is me, homecoming queen. Now, what's interesting about this is that growing up, I really didn't like wearing dresses or anything like that. And so my mom, she went to the local store, small town, okay? and had a wonderful relationship with them. Got the dress on loan because she knew that I wouldn't keep it. And then after the picture, we took it back. Now wait, I am ethical, okay? I just wanna throw this out there, okay? So um, we spent a lot more money, just not on dresses. My mom had a good time with that. So ethically, I just wanna throw that out there. Now, why do I tell you about a beaver and a lady in a, in a tiara? So I was our mascot, we were the beaver. I was the homecoming queen. So if you have any questions later about, you know, Queen Beaver, I'm your lady. That's my salute. Do feel free to ask me any questions. But I bring it up because in Reedsburg, Wisconsin, growing up in the 80s, the biggest difference was you were either Lutheran or you were Catholic. If you were Methodist, we didn't even, you weren't even in the equation. Growing up, I was forbidden to date a Catholic boy but they never said anything about a Catholic girl. So that brings us to, <laughs> for those of you playing along at home, that's where my inclusion comes from. Erin talked about the fact that I did a TED talk and I wrote a book. So um, as a middle school counselor, one of my, the best story that I can tell you about service above self, and this is what I love about you. My apologies that it's a little pixelated, but I took this from your, um, website, I think. And I, and I love what you do, not in a romantic way, because you're wonderful people, but I love the service above self. My second year as a middle school counselor, and this was in suburban 
um, Madison area and a student walked in and the diversity in the town where I was working, let's just say that a student of color stood out because there weren't a lot of students of color. And the student came in, seventh grader, sat down, looked at me and said, Miss Kennecke, it's easier pretending to be a boy than it is to be gay in this town. So big gasp that I had, and I knew that I had to help this student above, be, above and beyond myself. And so that's where I worked on helping out not just LGBT folks, but different abilities, people for whom English was not their first language. Um, I learned some sign language and just trying to have lots of different populations feel safe at school. And that's kind of what I'm doing for my um, graduate students as well. So I love that you have this concept as well. The three ways to improve the service, which you've already done, it's fantastic. But I was like, well, okay, I could, you know, call Aaron and say, Aaron, we're good. I mean, y'all check, 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 y'all are doing this already. But I thought that I would show you how you are doing these things. It is so important to show that you're an ally to whomever it is, right? So 30 years, best Valentine's present is um, shoveling the driveway, both sides and the path for the dog, okay? That's how you show someone that you love them. When we're talking about inclusion, we can show different ways, which I'll talk about. We're gonna shift mindsets and perceptions, just like the fact that you have done already, you have a new member who's coming in. I wrote down this um, healers and squealers. I'll have to get more information on that. I don't know if squealers was correct. Sad, happy dollars, love the name wheel. So how exciting, so bravo to you. You're shifting my mindset on how I can make um, more presentations more engaging. Erin, were you going to tell me, did I have healers and squealers correctly, or is that not what that is? Um, it is the squealer dollars. So yeah, if you are in, what is the other one? Squealer or Adam knows it. Publicity. Publicity. Oh, it's not squealers. Okay. Squeal oh, it is squealers. Oh, squealers okay. you, yeah, you can, you can um, own up to your own publicity, or if you see somebody else that has gotten some publicity, that's a squealer dollar. And Adam, thank you for staying on with that. And Erin, thank you for explaining that. I'm glad I asked because I was like, wow, I hope no one's in the witness protection plan. And then all of a sudden, you know, like they squeal on them. You know, and I was like, oh, well, no, I don't think that you <laughs> would do that. So anyway, I just love that you have those ideas because you are shaping such a positive culture. This is my second time being in this, in this meeting. My wife, Angela Prestel, spoke earlier to you. And I'm just so impressed with how you do these things. And the four-way test. You talked about this at the beginning. And I was like, how did they know I was gonna talk about this in my present? Well, of course not, because this is what you do. This is what makes a good person. So you, right, the things you think, say, or do. So I'm going to attribute this to you, my friends, as I move forward in my presentations. You know, is it the truth? These are the things we tell our middle school students. So maybe I have a whole lot of future Rotarians that I need to, you know, boost up. I was a Rotarian of the month when I was a youth person too. Truth, is it fair? Goodwill, better friendships, it, beneficial. That's what this is so exciting. And then you have all of these wonderful fundraisers, right? Scoop, there it is. So I saw that one. That's another way to show what you're doing. Um, when we are thinking about whether we are volunteering our time for the Rotary here, or Aaron, I know you're a lawyer. Um, Jackie, I believe you are in real estate, if still, right? So whether we are in our volunteer world, our, our home life, or having to go up to a cabin, you know, to make sure that the furnace works, we are showing the world who we are. And whether you are welcoming them with a sign like I have on the screen, you're learning how to say hello in sign language, which is what I teach my graduate students, and or thinking about ability. You can't always see if someone is differently abled. So one of the things that's coming up in our world now is a term called, thank you, Stella, for nodding. I, I saw you nod on that one. It's called neuro 
divergence. And that's one of those terms that, you know, it, it's, it's ooh, big and fancy. And how I take a look at that is I have a nephew who's living on the autism spectrum. He's very, very high functioning living with Asperger's. And he would be wonderful if he could find a job. He's 26 right now and he is struggling so much. And I'm trying to show him how he can fit into the world because that is so important so that he doesn't have to deal with, you know, people looking at him as a disability because he doesn't get um, sarcasm. He doesn't get those social jokes. So I'm trying to bring all of those things together. We're going to play a quick game. There's no money and you don't have to give any money unless you want to. But in the chat, if you're ready and able, talking about this. So on the screen, I have a picture. Hmm. Give an idea, you can even unmute. You're like, hey, I see two pair of scissors. What's the difference between these scissors? Anyone? Well, one has got a measurement. A ruler. That's right, Jackie. On the left, it does have a measurement. One's bigger. One is bigger. Well played, Madam President. Go ahead. Different, left hand color. right hand. Different colors. Mm -hmm. Left hand and right hand. Steve, fine, fine. You. <laughs> are exactly right. That's what it comes down to. And in the chat, my friends, now this is challenge my choice. If you don't want to disclose, that's okay. I have a master's in counseling. Everything is confidential here. But if you were born left-handed, please put a one in the chat. If you were born right-handed, please put a two in the chat. If you were born ambidextrous, my friends, put a three in that chat. Be proud of who you are. Let's see if we have any ambidextrous. I don't see any lefties at all. Oh, there's well, you're all, all in the right, all in the right mind. Oh, David. Okay. David was born left. And David, are you able to come on and you're not in trouble? I just want to ask no. you a quick question. Okay, fantastic. I don't think I'm muted. No, you aren't. Hello, David. Nice to meet you. I'm Lisa. Now it appears that you were born left-handed and now you're ambidextrous? Yeah, somewhat. Tell me a little bit more about that, please. Um, well, when I was a kid, I learned to play baseball right-handed uh -huh. because nobody had a glove to go on your right hand. Exactly. I in with everybody else. Um, I survived, but I wasn't very good. You're still but here to talk about it. I, I eat and, and write left-handed. Okay. The only uh -huh. thing I eat is popcorn ambidextrously. So, so my whole point with this, David, thank you. A round of applause for David. Thank you very, very much. That was tough. <laughs> is, well, oh, I'm a counselor. Later on, I'll stay on, David. We can talk later. I said, I'm, I'm a minister. <laughs> oh, well, I think you've got me beat on that one. You've got a closer connection. So you're, yeah. <laughs> So, so what I'm trying to say is that some people are born the way that they are. Some people present the way that they are. And I promise you that our youth of today are going to pre be presenting a lot more differently than how we grew up, whether it's our fashions or anything like that. And so when someone is the way that they are, go ahead and let them be. My wife went to a private Catholic school. She was left-handed. She still is left-handed. But because uh, she grew up in the 70s and 80s, the nuns wouldn't let her go out to resource, recess, resource, recess until she practiced cutting with her right hand because they thought that it would make it easier. So just like David's baseball analogy, right? I think that times are changing, but I just wanted to throw that out there. And so sometimes our unconscious bias can come up. But I am so proud of what the work that you are doing because the number one thing is, is it true? Do we think before we speak? And so I was like, well, I can train them on unconscious bias, but I think you're pretty good on that. Now, later on, if you do have questions about things or right now, if you wanna pop in, you can do that or put something in the chat, I have that up as well. But we just have to be aware that we all have unconscious bias. And sometimes it's okay. It goes back to um, the fight, flight, freeze, fight, flight, freeze. And there's one more. 
It'll come to me after the presentation. I can't think of it right now, but that's why we have those things to keep us safe. But we also need to be careful that if we see someone who maybe is of a different race, you know, do we automatically clutch our purse or walk on the other side of the street? So just keeping those things in mind. So that's how we can show that we are inclusive, which you are doing a great job already. The next thing that we want to do is we want to shift mindsets and perceptions. So some things have already shifted. The fact that when I grew up, my parents were in Rotary as well. They were in Rotary in Reedsburg. They didn't tell me how fun these meetings could be and how interactive you are. And the shift for me was, this is fantastic. And I knew that you always did foundations and that you raised money for great causes. I knew that. And it's shifting the way that I'm taking a look at how I can add benefit to your club or to any other club or to speak about the things that you do. So I have a picture of a small A and a capital A. And if you remember the student that came into my office, that day I was just a small A ally. Now it was a student of color and they were pretending to be a boy instead of being gay. And I had to shift from being a small A ally to where I didn't say anything because I didn't wanna get fired. And this was 10 years ago. And I am a white woman of privilege. and I was worried about that in my small town. So that day I shifted to a capital A ally. And I came back the next day and I was like, okay, I need to help this student because I didn't want this kid going home and killing themselves and not having an ally in the building. So that was my shift. Another shift can be maybe you hear a racist joke and rather than just sitting back and just being a small A ally, maybe you're gonna stand up and say, you know what, that's not cool. That's what a capital A ally does. Or especially if it, oh, families are hard. And so maybe talking to your family, maybe you just need to send them a message kindly on social media or unfollow them. That's what I did because I was like, I, I can't beat this one right here. And David, maybe I needed you as a minister to help me with that situation. That's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, so my shift in what I'm telling you is that you can do these things. And your shift that I have found came in Guatemala. And so I know that Marlin is on here and I was going to give, uh, she's in the video of this, Lynn, a shout out. So Marlin Lynn, bravo for what you're doing. And I watched this video and it shifted again to where I was like, holy smoke -aronis. That's the second time I've said that. Like you people are amazing. I just, yay for all of you and all that you're doing. And planting seeds and these people, I'm sure you've seen the video, they live in a dump and they're trying to make the best of what they can. And if they were to just stay there, right? And we would have a microaggression on, well, that's what they look like. So that's one microaggression. So maybe because of their skin color, they're poor. I'm not saying you do this microaggression. Um, well, look where they live. They have to be poor. They're, you know, outside of the dump and they're probably smelly and, you know, things like that. But Lynn, thank you for, I can see your video now, my friend. And Lynn, what you taught me is that the best thing, this is what the community wanted. The community asked for this. They wanted to do these things. And Lynn, I just have to say that that was wonderful that it was not even that I was thinking that I had this microaggression, but I was like, yay for what you're doing. So I just wanted to applaud you, Lynn. I'm sure it's not just you. No, our club is behind that. Your club is behind that. And what you're doing, my friend, and, and club is you're showing other clubs how to break down these barriers and, and to move beyond microaggressions, right? And so that it doesn't have to be, oh, you're from that country. Or when you see someone, right, you don't automatically assume that if they're from Guatemala that they speak Spanish because I found that out in the video too, that there's another language that's spoken. So I did my homework there, Lynn. So bravo to you, my friend. So that's an excellent way to shift mindsets and perceptions so that we can shape our policies. 
And Tara, way to wear your mask. I think that's you under that mask there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So your people in action because we are shaping. Now this, here's what's fun is that this picture right here is all three. Bravo to you. You're showing how to do it. You're shifting mindsets and perceptions that you're not just, you know, it's not just me, but I want to protect everyone else. And then you're branding with the Rotarians. Hello. So shifting mindsets, because I think everyone knows that the Rotarians, that you're a service club. But what do you really do? Service above self. Hello. Brand it. Hashtag it. Put that everywhere. Because if I were looking at joining a club, hello, here's your engagement. So I said that we were going to talk about um, microaggressions. We were going to talk about engagement. We were going to talk about unconscious bias. And again, so I got this right off of your, I did your website and your Facebook page a lot. So I'm not sure where I got this, but here's how you get the engagement. And you already have a new member who's going to be joining today. So that's fantastic. If I can buy into these values, that's how I shape my world. That's how I shape the conversation with young people. That's how I shape my neighborhood by helping people. That's how I shape becoming the next brought person in the stand who wants to learn. And you don't have to be a boy. Girls can grill too. I just want to throw that out there. So yay. Just there you go. Top chef at your brat fair. So, and then, you know, just be awesome. Why not? That's fantastic. So show that you're doing what you're doing, which you already are, my friends. You are shifting mindsets and perceptions. So that someone says, you know what? No, oh, those kids in Guatemala, let them do their own thing. You know what? By helping that kid in Guatemala understand well, it's more than just seeds, though. I think that, you know, they're, they're, you're building this community center. That's going to be a future leader that's going to help all of us. So you are shifting those mindsets and perceptions, and you're shaping the world to be such a better place. Again, you gave me so much good work here. I was like, well, okay, I'll just jump on your bandwagon and see what you're doing. So I'm kind of done. <laughs> And I'm going to open it up for questions. 